he honore gloria ki te atu e runga rawa he mau nga ronga ki tōna i wirunga tuwhenua e whakaaro pai ki ngā tangataka toa e te atu a kārawa tūwhera atu ngā ngā kau ketuka katoa ki a koe e mō hiochi ana e koe ki ngā hie hie katoa e kore hoki ngā roi a koe te mehuna whakahāngia i hōtau wai rua tapu e whakamāio a mātou nei whakaaro e tino aroha ki a mātou ki a koe i te whakaonui o ki tō ingo tapu o i hū kreiti hoki tō mātou kei whakaora a ki tonu atu āmenu. People of faith around the world have worked tirelessly to draw the attention of national leaders and decision makers to the existential challenge of climate change. Over the last year, the main catalyst for action has been the United Nations Conference of Parties starting in Glasgow in just a few days. Our working group in Aotearoa, New Zealand, has carefully developed the statement that is about to be presented. We have brought the statement to religious leaders and interfaith groups throughout the country for their endorsement. And now we bring it to our political leaders through you, Minister Shaw. So what does the statement actually say? It reminds leaders of the huge moral and spiritual challenges posed by the climate challenge crisis and the need for urgent response. It also reminds them of the rich traditions and teachings of the many religious communities now present in Aotearoa, New Zealand. These traditions include deep care for the natural world alongside care for all our people. We know that there are many active adherents of our faith communities here, and many more who would identify with the moral and social values originating in those religious traditions. We are mindful also that our religious values have much in common with understandings central to Te Ao Māori. So we urge the government to realise the benefits of incorporating these old teachings in its response to the Paris Agreement. The statement goes on to make 10 specific recommendations towards engaging the climate change kaupapa. These recommendations support a bold national action plan based on our common faith-based values of equity, justice and mutual support. So Minister, to conclude with this statement, we offer moral support and encouragement to you and other national leaders whose decisions will have profound effects not only on vulnerable communities, but on the whole web of life that is presently threatened by human economic activity. We wish you strength, high ambition, and above all, hope for your challenge in Glasgow. Thank you. Minister, thank you. Thank you for receiving this statement. Uh, interfaith conversations and dialogue have been a feature of Aotearoa New Zealand now for actually many decades. And what we have discovered through this friendship and through this mutual respect is that while we are diverse, there are also some things that we have in common. And one of the key things that we have in common is our understanding that this uh, beautiful creation that we enjoy is a gift, uh, that we are mere stewards of that. Whether it be the whenua or the moana, uh, we are to hand to those who follow us something that is richer and deeper than we ourselves have received. And we know that's under huge threat. Uh, we are grateful for your advocacy over uh, a lifetime, really. Uh, you know us, uh, you know our commitment, you know uh, the support that we bring with this statement. Uh, and we, we pray that there will be a blessing on your travel and a blessing on the conversations. And I wonder if we are not even now praying amidst the ruins of our earthly house of worship. And I wonder how would it be if all of us treated this earth as a house of worship? How would we walk on its floors? How would we speak under its dome? How would we adorn its windows? How would we strengthen its foundations? How would we perfume its air? How would we respect and protect and revere this shared house of worship. Corruption has appeared in both land and sea because of what people's own hands have brought forth so that they may taste something of what they have done so that hopefully 
they will turn back. So that hopefully they will turn back. This, I feel, is one of the strongest messages that faith leaders and congregations and communities around the world have to offer. It is the idea of hope. Without hope, we cannot see a way forward. And without a way forward, we cannot act. And if we do not act, we will be lost in what our own hands have wrought. Hope, action, change. It seems fitting to end on that note with a few very well-known lines from that great poet of the heart, Rumi. Mevlana says, come. Even if you have broken your vow a thousand times, come. Ours is not a caravan of despair, come. Climate change will ir irrefutably affect everyone on a global scale. Every country will feel its impact, and it is up to us to make sure we can do everything in our power to keep the planet safe for future generations. As a young person, seeing the detrimental impacts that climate change is currently having on our planet makes me really concerned for our future. There are countries who will be hit the hardest and do not have enough resources to adapt to and mitigate climatic factors. That is why I pursued a Master's of Climate Change Science and Policy. The vision that this statement provides encompasses everything Aotearoa stands for. In particular, our solidarity, mutual respect for other cultures and traditions, and our mission to fight climate change. We organise a forum for our students, and these are some of the narratives that were shared by students who are from the Pacific Island. A student from Kiribati shared about how the health workers in the hospital had to vacate the maternity wards. The children had just given birth because the water level had started to rise and inundate the hospital. The candidates from Vanuatu and Fiji talked about the severe devastations caused on the livelihoods of families due to the cyclone. We all know that as of late, the frequency and severity of cyclones has really increased in the Pacific. And the sad thing, ladies and gentlemen, it's something that we did not contribute to, but we're facing the brunt of. Pacific Island nations, in particular, low-lying atolls like Tuvaru, Kiribati, are facing the severe devastations of, of the cyclones. And the unfortunate thing is that we can build back buildings, but the psychological trauma caused on our people, knowing that when is this next cyclone going to come along and, and damage all what they have invested in. May the blessings of Ranganui, the Sky Father above, and Papatuanuku, the Earth Mother below, and the world all around us be with us all. I am filled with the spirit of life. Uh, I want to start by uh, thanking all of you uh, from each uh, individual faith community and collectively uh, for your um, uh, your advocacy uh, and for the fact that you have come together uh, so um, comprehensively around uh, the challenge that is facing all of us. Um, you mentioned that you know when we have people from different faith communities uh, with all of those histories come together around something like this, it says that we, we have a problem. Um, and there will be many more very tough days ahead, and I am hopeful that we will have a few good, uh, good news days scattered in between. Um, I, I, I'm tremendously grateful for uh, the work that you all do in your individual uh, faith communities. You can, you're able to reach into communities that I can't reach into uh, and to have conversations that I can't have. Uh, and um, ultimately it is going to take all of us and it's going to take everything that we have got to put pressure on the political system 
to step up to the plate and to do what we have not done before, which is to stop the pollution that we're putting into the atmosphere at, at a, a catastrophic rate. We need to do that here in Aotearoa, we need to do it around the world. But it's difficult for us in New Zealand to tell others how they should do things unless we are prepared to do the hard yards uh, ourselves here at home in our domestic economy, in all of the parts of our industry uh, where we you know, where we have been allowing that pollution to increase. And so I, I guess I have a request. Please don't consider, I know you don't, but don't consider this the end of the process at all. Um, please return uh, to your marae, to your churches, to your temples, uh, to your places of worship, uh, and continue to have those conversations with your, with your communities. And please ask them to get in touch with their local member of parliament, with their, local, with their ministers, uh, with the Prime Minister's office and to let us know just how important it is across all of these faith communities uh, that we take stronger action on climate change than we have in the past. Because without that, all we have in front of us is what we're told about how much it's going to cost or you know all of these kinds of things or how difficult it is and it is difficult and it is expensive because we've left it so long to get started but it doesn't mean that it's not important so once again thank you so much uh, for your work uh, and for your advocacy Norera tēnā koto, tēnā koto, tēnā tātou katoa you look at God's work for who can straighten what he's twisted and the commentary reads when the Blessed, One, Holy Be the Blessed One, Holy Be He, created the first human, he took him and he led him around the trees of the Garden of Eden. And he said to him, look at my works, how beautiful and praiseworthy they are, and all that I've created. It is for you that I've created it. But pay attention that you don't corrupt and destroy my world. For if you corrupt it, for if you destroy it, there's none to repair it after you. Amen. <laughs>